Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Comes a time in every trident's life where it requires maintenance, and today is that day. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are installing the DIY Trident Maintenance Kit. So let's get to it. Now my Trident's actually already in a 3D printing case, but I still want to show you guys how to take this apart. You would start by pulling out the tray, um, take out all your reagents. You can pop off the front cover by pulling the bottom out. And after that, we flip it over and we unscrew our little rubber feet. So on these guys, if you do it counterclockwise, these little rubber feet are your screws for the bottom. So be careful and just slowly take those out. And once your feet are off, you can begin by pulling the outside of the cover, working away front to back and you will eventually get your cover pulled off which reveals the skeleton of the trident and then to take off the middle section if you squeeze the center portion of it we'll release it from those side bits and you can pop it off now again be a little more gentle if you're doing it with your actual ones my guts are already out so let's pop over to that side of it now before you actually disconnect your trident you want to make sure you run the trident shutdown procedure and this involves removing the sample line from the tank and all of your region containers is just make sure all the lines are emptied out before you get to it. So run that, after that you're safe to dis disconnect it. Now as for the DIY Trident service kit, it comes with new sample and wastelands, as well as the internal lines. Uh, we also have a filter for your sample line, so optional accessory. Uh, we got some more tubing for the cavette and connectors, and a new pump head. Now I'm gonna start with the cavette, so I'm gonna peel up one side of the electrical tape pops open the lid, we should be able to slide our cavette up. And on this, we're gonna have to remove it from our pump head, so I'm just gonna loosen this one off. And it should just be able to slide it up from there. So we got our cavette out, feed the sample line in the same way you kinda took it out. And gently slide this back in. Now, this does use a colorometer, so try and make sure you don't get any fingerprints or smudges on it. I just saw that I got one, so I'm just gonna use a little glass cloth just to Make sure that's cleaned off nicely and slide our cavette back inside. Now the old cavette does contain a little tiny pill and this is our magnetic stir bar. So we're going to give this one a wipe off and reinstall it to the new cavette. And once it's installed we can put our little cap back on top. Now if you are in the full trident mode and you're removing this and you do have to remove this ribbon cable it's very important to make sure that the red line is on the top so you don't short out the board and give yourself a costly repair. Now if you watch the original videos um, Paul does recommend you make some marks on either side of this tubing of where it connects so we're going to do that just so we can put the reagent lines back into the proper spots and we're just going to put a little tiny mark on either side of it and this is just going to be for lining it back up. Um, I am going to go one further and actually just write on what they are so there's a one so we got one, two, three, four, five so I just did two, one and five just so it's really easy to know which ones go where for later. So next on the list, I am going to replace these internal lines for our sample and our waste. Okay, so our pump head goes to the 12 o'clock position, so I'm going to unhook that, take off the old pump head, and we will install the new one. So taking a look at the old pump head, um, the left was on 12 o'clock on the manual, and the right-hand side had our little connector. So I'm going to just re-put this on the right-hand side just to prevent any confusion later. There you go, so new pump heads in place, and reconnect this guy to our 12 o'clock. Okay, now next we're going to replace the waistline, so I'm going to pull this one off. And look at this one, we got our black line to our little piece of tubing. And we got a similar thing in the new kit. That now, just to make my life easier, I'm going to put this on the manifold and then I'll push it through the solenoid. And to get these back in, all you do is kind of push and slide them in, so it's pretty easy. Now that's out of the way, we're going to do our, or our waistline rather. You can see there's a little bit of a pinch warning in the old one from the pinch valve. And of course we'll get this one back onto our manifold. And slide it back between the pinch valves. So this one can just kind of wrap up and around. And back through the bottom hole here. Now the kit does come with a little tube router. If you don't have one installed already, you can of course install one there. And if you already have one installed, it's nice and easy just to reuse it. This just kind of keeps the hoses nice, nice and aligned. 
Now in retrospect, I don't think I actually have to remove these cables. I think that was only for part of if it was in the housing. So I guess a little bit of a bonus if you have the, the DIY housing version. And now reconnecting our Cavette just connects right to the outside of our pump head motor. So super easy to reconnect this guy. Now inspecting it all, we just want to make sure all of our hoses are reconnected to our manifold. Um, if you're ever guessing what is where, you can see at the top of it, there's two notches and that's for our 12 o'clock. And you know, that one's the top main one that goes vertically. So we got our 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So pretty easy on that front. So that was actually extremely easy, probably even more so because I already have this kind of DIY money mini Trident housing. Again, this is probably a Voyager warranty do at your own risk thing, but given my extremely tight stand, I do like the, the compact nature of this one. Now again, if you have the, the regular Trident housing, it is going to be a little more time to basically go through this process in reverse, but this was extremely quick and easy to do myself, so very happy I went with the DIY row. And we of course have our new reagent lines. I don't know if I'm going to use the waste line per se, but I am most definitely going to be using a new sample intake line, and might as well use the new little filter that comes with it. Um, it does have a little tiny direction for the arrow for which way it flows on, so we'll put this on the intake. Now another thing to note, you will have to recalibrate everything on this, so it is a good idea to make sure that you have a fresh pack of reagents waiting and ready. Now because we just replaced stuff, it is definitely going to need to be recalibrated, and on that note we are going to install a fresh pack of reagents alongside with it. Alright, should be good to reinstall it and rerun our calibration. Alright, so the little Trident is reinstalled back in her home. It is currently going through the initialization process, so once this is done, I'm going to pop it in the calibration solution and recalibrate things. I'm not going to lie, that process was extremely easy. I'm slightly easier because I already had it in a custom printed housing. Um, that being said, it's a few more steps to reassemble it if you're using the standard Trident housing. Now, it is installed, we've replaced our tubing, our pump head, our cavette, and it is back installed right now. It is finished initializing. So what I did now is I just kicked off a combined test. So it's gonna do its full thing, you know, it's gonna make sure the sample line's feeding, the pinch valves are working. And assuming we go through this whole process, and you know, we see our elk or calcium or mag, we got all our results, we know there's no issues, then it's time to calibrate it and we are done. So don't be afraid if you want to do the DIY service route. It really wasn't that hard at all, to be honest. And it's a good excuse to learn more about the inner work is if you're trying. So right, who doesn't want to up those life skills? All right, guys, hopefully you enjoy this. Hopefully I've given some of you guys the confidence to do your own DIY Trident servicing. Um, the kit's relatively inexpensive and it's really easy to do it yourself. As always, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.